Hello, today on the Humanistic Resources Show, we're going to be talking about strategies for post-layer employee wellness and productivity. You will not want to miss this. Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Humanistic Resources Show, sponsored by You Define Wellness. I'm Denise O'Malley. I'm your host for today. We've been talking a lot of what type of programs can we bring to the table that can help those of you who are in the field of helping people at your company, the human resource professionals. And you know what the situation is out there. There's been a lot of layoffs this year. Um, there's uh, struggles in hiring the right people. There's all kinds of things that have been going on. And so what we wanted to do today was talk about some um, post layoff strategies to help you with employee wellness and productivity. And I have an expert that I have invited to join me today. And I'd like to introduce all of you to Rena Vocon, uh, the owner of Passion Fit, who is also a provider in the Udivine Wellness Network. So Rena, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Denise. I'm excited to be here and get into our conversation. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a conversation today. Um, now, you own Passion Fit, which is, uh, well, why don't you go ahead and explain what Passion Fit is? Yeah, so Passion Fit is a consumer and corporate health and wellness company. And our focus is on, you know, helping people to leverage wellness tools in their personal and professional life. <coughs> Excuse me, little allergy here. Um, and so we focus on working with individuals as well as companies, nonprofits, universities, schools, and the media on how to leverage things like fitness and movement, nutrition, mindfulness, productivity, work-life balance to really help people be at their best, both personally and professionally. And prior to Passion Fit, I worked in corporate America for about 16, 17 years. So I kind of know firsthand what it's like to manage organizations and people and the things that can happen when layoffs inevitably do occur as well. And that was going to be my second question is, is how does your background translate to uh, understanding about layoffs? So let's just dive into it. Um, what happens to the existing employees, the ones who remain after a layoff? Yeah, you know, I think on the one level, they are relieved, right, that they survived the layoff, they have their, you know, their jobs. But on the other end, they're probably, you know, scared because especially in these latest round of layoffs, you know, I, I'm a certified health and well-being um, coach, employee well-being coach and professional strengths coach through Gallup. And a lot of the research shows that those people that are still around, you know, they, they survived, but those that lost their jobs might have lost them, not for reasons, you know, having to do with performance, but maybe it was just sheer numbers or the product area that they were working in or the department that they were working with in. So I think for those that are still around, they're feeling like, you know, it could be me next. And so there is that anxiety that builds up even for those that survived. You know, you and I have talked about this a little bit where I've said, you know, for an employer who's done a massive layoff, and we've seen some massive layoffs in the last year, um, for them to be able to go back to their, their remaining employees and say, we care about you. It means nothing. Those employees know that they're dispensable, right? So how does an employer go about rebuilding trust with the existing employees? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think you have to approach it in a very genuine and empathetic way. Um, yeah, not claiming to, to, you know, to be something that you're not as an employer, especially in that time when other people have lost their jobs. Um, and it's hit a lot of industries as well, the tech industry, the financial services and mortgage industry. A lot of my corporate wellness clients, you know, have told me firsthand what it's been like. So I think, you know, the first step is asking the remaining employees, how are they feeling and give them the opportunity to be really open and honest. You could do that in manager meetings, you like one-on-ones. You could do that in anonymous surveys. Um, whatever means you take, I think it's just important to really turn it over to the employees and give them a chance to really say what's on their mind. So that way you can come back to them with a response that is genuine and that doesn't feel um, disingenuous, really. Um, so that would be the first step I would suggest. Okay. So is it better to have that question come from 
the employer or is it better to actually hire someone else to come in and ask that question? Because I don't know that they're going to get genuine answers. That's a really, yeah, that's a really good point because for fear of then maybe they could get laid off in the next round. Yeah. Um, I think having a third party is definitely an option so that that way, you know, it can truly be considered anonymous. Um, but I do think that there is some merit from having it come from the employer because then it shows that the employer employer does care and wants to hear from employees. So maybe they preface it with something like, this is completely anonymous. This doesn't affect your job or your future job. Something to kind of put a disclaimer on it so that employees do feel at ease expressing what they really think. How important is it for the employer to be open and transparent about, this is why we had the layoff. Here's where we are today. Here's where we're going tomorrow and get employee buy-in on that. Yeah, I think there needs to be transparency. I know that, again, from, you know, working with corporate clients, there's always the fear of data leakages or, you know, leaking things to the press, which is why I think the latest round of layoffs for a lot of companies were done in maybe a way that just didn't feel as empathetic um, to the employees that got let go. Um, so I understand the need for you know privacy, protecting confidential information, but as honest and open as a company can be with reasons that maybe they've already shared with the public, um, that's already been out in the media, that they've shared with shareholders. I think that that can you know, still be communicated in a, a more internal way with the employees so that they really understand why because some employees might not have all the information and then they could be making assumptions that could put their employer in a really negative light in their mind when maybe in reality if they knew the reasons behind it it would make more sense to them so you mentioned that um in what we were talking uh, before the show about strategies for this and what yeah. are some strategies that an employer could or should be putting in place right now? Yeah, you know, I think it's looking at, take stock of what's been working and what hasn't been working, um, especially when it comes to you know, the culture of your company. If there are things that just haven't sat well with employees, if from the top down, there's more of a fear-based uh, management style, um, that's something to take into consideration. Um, you know, if the employer didn't have a lot of employee wellness programs in the past, and that never really seemed like a priority, maybe it is time to, you know, partner with the human resources teams or the people operations teams and figure out, okay, what, what have we not been doing that where we're maybe missing the boat? Because employees' mental health and physical physical health is really critical. And I think, you know, when I was working with corporate clients, especially in the heart of the pandemic, I felt like, wow, the industry is finally changing. And they're realizing the importance of thinking about the employees holistically as whole people. And there was a lot of focus on mental health in the workplace and providing programs and resources. Um, and then I feel like, you know, once we kind of went back into the regular world and a lot of companies are mandating employees to come back into the office, then it, there's been a shift. Um, and I think, and I understand where we've had this looming recession and when you're in hard economic times and you're laying people off and cutting costs, it's hard to think about employee wellness programs. But if anything, I would say now is more important than ever to figure out how to implement them or enhance the ones you already have. So I think that's an important step. I think our sound went out, yes. No, I, I muted myself because I had dogs next door who were barking. So sorry about that. So here we go. So why? Why is now the most important time to be talking about wellness? Because there's a lot of uncertainty in the workplace. There's a lot of cultural shifts that are happening, whether it's remote work or hybrid work or mandating that employees be back in the office. And, you know, there's there's a talent drain. Employees are leaving. I mean, we've heard of all the buzzwords in the industry. It's no surprise when we talk about things like quiet quitting and the great breakup and the great resignation and all of those things. And, you know, yes, there are employees that are now there's the big stay where they're hunkering down and trying to stay with their current employer for fear of that there aren't as many jobs out there. Um, but I think, you know, it, it's a time where there is all this change, there is all this anxiety. And if companies want to continue to perform at their best and be productive, especially in these challenging economic times, you've got to focus on your most important assets, which are your people. 
right? Your customers, but also your employees. So I think with the world, you know, experiencing what we have in the last three years, if it's taught us anything, it's, you know, to value health, to value well-being, to value that in the workplace, and to give employees the opportunity to, um, you know, have resources to help them, because this has not been an easy road for anybody in the last three years. No, no, it hasn't been an easy road. And, you know, you're talking about give, making sure that you have the emotional support for them. Absolutely. But I, I know you that you're not talking about just the mental health support. There's more to it in that. Yes. You, and you briefly mentioned their overall health. But what types of programs can an employer focus on to help support employees? Yeah. Um, and to, to answer your question about the mental support and emotional support. Yeah. A lot of it too is helping them to be, to be happy on the job, right? Cause that's going to make them more productive. It's going to keep them more engaged and hopefully help them to be more loyal to the organization. So I think the first thing is to find out from the employees themselves, what are they needing right now in terms of topics? And then you can create a content calendar around it. Maybe it's financial wellness, Maybe it's, um, you know, right. And um, maybe it is focusing on sleep because, you know, their sleep is being disturbed because of all the stress and anxiety of the layoffs in the first place. Maybe it is on anxiety and stress management and mindfulness or meditation practices. So I think it's figuring out, you know, what employees need um, and then figuring out the topics and the content of topics in a calendar that can allow you to put pull together resources, whether it's you know, lunch and learns or workshops or, you know, coaching, um, you know, various types of personal and professional development coaching or other programs by department or by geography. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm biased in this, obviously. So, so take it for what it's worth on this. But I, I'm going to say that after a layoff, this is the most important time to bring in an outside resource um, to help do that evaluation make the coordination because the last thing you need are your existing staff employees dedicating their time, taking it away from your day-to-day -day business, um, focusing on these things that are not revenue generating at the bottom line. Yes, it is an expense, but it's an expense well worth it where they can actually do an assessment with the employees. And, and so an outside wellness coordinator is really, really a cr critical thing to, yes, you're adding it back in. Employees may roll their eyes and say, wait, we just cut all these people. Now you're adding more expenses. But in the long run, it will benefit the employees and help support them a little bit better and then deliver the goals that you need. And so you can stay focused on rebuilding your business. Yes. Just my own two cents. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I do think that, you know, having an external resource that's unbiased, right, that can really provide an objective look at what's working and what's not in the organization is important. I think if they could partner with the internal human resources teams, that's the best, right, the best mm -hmm. way to do it. Um, but yes, I do think there's so many great providers out there um, that can that can really help and um, yes, take a more objective approach for sure. Well, and the other reason for it, um is you mentioned a variety of things. You mentioned financial, you mentioned um, their happiness, you mentioned their health, you mentioned mm -hmm. one size does not fit all. So you need to be able to have somebody who can tap into the resources to help the employees because otherwise you're just not going to get the participation in it. Right. I agree. Yes. Having a customized approach is also showing the employees that you care and you're mm -hmm. listening to what their individual needs are because layoffs affect people differently. Right. Yeah. I mean, all this change, some people can roll with it and keep going. And, you know, for other people, it can be debilitating for a while. So mm -hmm. it's important to be sensitive to those differences amongst employees. And yes, it shouldn't ever be a one size fits all, even if it's not in a time of layoffs, just in general, for employee well being programs to be successful, they do need to have a level of personalization and customization, they should really integrate with the existing culture of the company, or if that culture needs to be changed, then they should help drive the new culture. Um, so I think that those are all, you know, you know, very important points and yeah, important to really make the program successful and then being able to measure the ROI. You mentioned, Denise, the mm -hmm. expenses and right, people are going to be questioning expenses at a time like this. But if you can really try to look at things like employee participation levels, engagement levels, if you see a decrease in healthcare costs or sick days for the period that you're running the program, I think that can really go a long way in showing that it is working. Um, and if things are not working, that's where you continue to get feedback from all of the employees that are participating to see what you need to change. 
What are some other strategies that you recommend? Um, yeah, you know, I think it's 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 maybe looking at things like a strength based approach to management. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a Gallup certified professional strengths coach. I don't know if you're familiar, um, those of you that are listening with Clifton Strengths, but there's a huge tie in that shows that when employees actually enjoy the work that they're doing, when it's tied to the mission and vision of the company, when it plays to their natural strengths and passions and interests and talents, they're probably going to be, you know, more engaged on the job, they're going to produce better results, and they'll be happier. So I think looking at, um, at that is really important as well, so that you can make sure people are, <coughs> excuse me, in the right positions. And if there are changes that are, you know, needing to be made, um, or if employees have aspirations of doing, you know, different things, maybe they want to take on a management role, maybe they want to take a lateral move into a different department, you know, looking at that can also be important, especially post layoff when things are changing anyway. I think that's a very good point. Things are changing anyway. And I'm a huge believer that's one of the best times to implement change. Um, just because, okay, you're already, we're already going down a road that we are unfamiliar with. Let's, um, if we need to redesign what this whole thing looks like, now's the time. Let's make these changes. And it gives, it's for me in my career and when I was working for other companies, that was always my t opportunity to make my move. Yes. You yeah. know, where I suddenly it was like, oh, I, they're open to ideas now's the time to, for me to step in and make some suggestions. And it didn't always work. And sometimes they, it was a great idea and, and somebody else got it, but. That can happen. It, yeah. It's yeah. good to put yourself out there and yeah. It, it, and yeah. leaders as well to look at that when they're thinking about talent management and staffing up their teams, mm -hmm. you know, maybe having everyone take a, a strengths assessment um, to be able to look at that and make some intelligent decisions, I think can really um, be helpful. And I also think just having, you know, one on one honest conversations with managers and their direct reports is also really important. There's a lot of research from Gallup that shows that that can go a long way in rebuilding trust and getting on the same page and, mm -hmm. you know, just asking employees how they're doing. I mean, I think we've all had those one on ones with our with our managers and before they get down to, okay, let's look at our, you know, our goals and our deliverables and where we are tracking according to revenue targets. When they just say, how are you? How's your family? You know, yeah. how are you liking your job these days? I think that can really allow employees to feel seen and heard and something so small, uh, you know, seemingly can really make a big difference as well. Okay. So how does management get to that mindset? Because they're going through this too, and they've got their own head trash that's going on. Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you, do we work with the management team before the layoff to get them into that position and prepared for being open to new ideas and suggestions? Or do we just throw everybody into the deep end of the swimming pool and hope they all swim? I would say the former <laughs> as opposed to the latter. Yes. I mean, that's true. A lot of times the leaders in management are so focused on their people excuse me, that they're overlooked and they're not able to be taken care of. And mm -hmm. you know, you need to take care of them. So it's kind of like a parent, right? You have to fill your own cup <laughs> before you can fill the cup of others. And I think the same applies to managers and leaders. They need to kind of assess where they're, you know, where they are in terms of their health and their well-being and their stress levels and, and what they're feeling about their own jobs. And, you know, it, it all is sort of it's all relative. So their managers and leaders should be checking in on them so that they can check in on their people. So yeah, I think it maybe starts with maybe it's a leadership offsite or an executive summit of some sort and get those leaders talking and opening up about where they're still seeing holes, where they're still seeing disengagement, um, you know, potential threats of people leaving um, and, and, and how they're feeling about it all and let them voice it and make sure that they feel heard and understood and then train them to have the tools to then go on and have these types of open conversations with their direct reports as well. Awesome. We're going to take a quick commercial break to pay for this um, time together. We'll be right back.
All right, we're back. You know, I wasn't, I really had not planned this out in advance, but that commercial reminded me about the, the different types of employees. So I have a question along those lines. When an employer is working on strategies to, um, after a post layoff, how important is it to work, have different goals and ideas and thoughts and work with different types of employees that are out there? I think it's very important. You know, we we want our workplaces to be inclusive, to really, you know, meet employees where they are, to respect, you know, all the differences in the backgrounds of employees. So I do think that as we were talking about earlier, it's definitely not a one size fits all. And I think the most successful employee wellness programs can be those that, you know, have a menu of options that people can choose from. And again, it's originally based off of the feedback that they've received from the employees themselves about what they need. Um, and then I think it's also important to remember that not everybody wants to share their you know, personal health um, information in the workplace. So when you're thinking about group coaching versus one-on-one -on -one coaching or programs that are for individuals versus groups, that's another really important consideration to make. Some people thrive on having community and support and accountability and maybe feeling like they're not alone and that helps them. But for some people, that can be really intimidating and really uncomfortable. So I think it's just important to look at the needs of each of your employees and, yeah, not treat everybody the same, but rather offer them programs that can really speak to their individual needs, which, which takes research and work. It's not easy, um, but it's important to do that homework first so that you can increase the chances of success. You know, and that's another reason why it's important to maybe to bring in a consultant to work yeah. with you. Uh, you know, this is something that I know that you do, right? I do. You can, you can step into that role um, and, and help them talk a little bit more about what it is that you are doing. Because I think now, as we talked a little bit at the very beginning, but I think now is when it really needs to be um, remind, remind you all, all of this. Absolutely. So my company, Passion Fit, launched um, a formal corporate wellness program at the beginning of this year in January and, um, you know, hired a business advisor and worked with a great team to kind of help put this together. And um, the focus is on a very comprehensive program. So it does involve, you know, having sort of a, an overall holistic um, educational session, which covers things at a high level. So that could be, you know, movement, <coughs> excuse me, um, nutrition, mindfulness, work-life balance, sleep, stress management, all of those things. But then there are monthly workshops that allow, you know, the company and employees to hear deep dive talks about each of these topics. And that's where they can really pick and choose month to month, which ones are most relevant to them. And then on top of that, there's monthly group coaching, but individual coaching is offered as well so that then they can really apply what they're learning. I think the education piece is really important, but then the actual coaching piece is equally, if not more important, because that's where they can put what they're learning into action. They can have support. They can have accountability to kind of see how they're doing. And then on top of that, they have access to our online course on work-life balance. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are those, at Those last right. allergies, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, they so in addition to the, the coaching and the workshops and the comprehensive talks, they have access to the online course, as I mentioned, on work-life balance. They have unlimited access to live stream fitness and yoga classes that they can do anytime, anywhere, um, and so much more. And then there will be tracking of participation, engagement, you know, working directly with the company to make sure that, you know, there is actually participation and people are getting something out of it. That's so awesome. that's the program, yeah. And we're out there talking to about 60 different companies right now and you know, trying to help them to figure out where it can fit into existing programs or a brand new program if they've never done it before. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. As we're getting towards the end of this, um, I'm, I'm sure there were things that you had been thinking of that you wanted to make sure that we discussed today that I haven't asked you about. Is there anything on your list that you still want to cover? So on my list, I think we covered most of it. I think it's just, it's important to take stock of this. I know it is a really tough time right now in the marketplace. I know companies are experiencing a lot of change. Um, AI, we didn't even talk about AI and how that's affecting jobs and people's fears and worries about, you know, their jobs maybe getting overtaken by AI in the next five years. Mm -hmm. 
So there's just, there's a lot that's happening right now in the world and in the workplace. And so I think, again, it's important to go back to the basics and really think about the people because without the people, and even with AI out there, I think there's always going to be a need for human interaction, mm -hmm. right? And human problem solving and innovation and creativity. Um, so invest in your people and leverage outside support, as Denise mentioned. There are so many great vendors that can help. Um, you know, clearly you're in a position of time of change and a time of uncertainty. So bringing in experts that are doing this for other companies and that understand the challenges that they're facing. There's a lot of great learnings that can be applied and best practices that can be applied. Um, so yeah, I would say invest in your people. I think you define wellness is a really great resource with so many different providers mm -hmm. um, and again you can pick and choose from my company passion fit is here to support um, anyone that needs it so you know lean on us and, and we're here to help awesome and we'll leave that as the final word how's that so for all of you thank you for joining us today rena thank you um, for your wisdom and sharing it and for those who are watching, no matter which how you're watching this, whether as a recording or you're with us live right now, we do appreciate you. And if you believe that Rena can help you, or perhaps you define wellness, reach out to us wherever it is that you found this video. Um, we will get your message one way or another. But we really uh, are here to help support you and uh, make the transitions easier, particularly after a post layoff uh, that we've been talking about today. So, with that being said, join us every Tuesday for the Humanistic Resources Show. We'll see you next week.